Hey guys, welcome back to Geometry. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of theorems that go along with the angles of triangles, and we're going to look at how we can use those to solve some problems with triangles. So first, let's take a look at this one. We have the angle sum theorem for triangles, which says that the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So that means if I take the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B, that has to equal 180 degrees. Now, we've kind of taken this as like a common sense thing for, for now. Uh, we've kind of understood that that has to be true. But in geometry, we like to have some proofs. So let's talk about exactly why this has to be the case. Okay, well, I'm going to do what's called an informal proof, which means I'm just going to kind of talk our way through this. So I've got this angle, or this triangle, triangle ABC. Now, there we have this property that says that we can add a line through this point A that's parallel to uh, segment BC. So let's put that on here. I got that line and we'll draw that it's parallel to line BC. Okay, so these two lines are parallel. Now, if I consider this as a transversal between those two lines, that means that this angle here and this angle here have to be congruent. Okay, additionally, or along the same lines, no pun intended, if I draw a transversal here, now I have this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles, which makes those angles congruent. Now, let's call this angle one, this angle two, and this angle three. Okay, those angles together have, have to form a straight line. They have to make a straight angle. So we could say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees. Now, we know that this angle down here, angle B, well, let's call that angle 4, and let's call this one angle 5. Okay, I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Well, based on the definition of congruent angles, we could say that the measures of those angles are equal for both of those. And then from there, we can substitute. Okay, I can put angle 4 in place of angle 3. And I can put angle 5 in place of measure of angle 1. Okay, now what we've said is that the measures of those triangles, or the measures of those angles in the triangle, so here's angle 5, here's angle 2, Okay, which is up here by angle A. And then finally, here's angle 4, which is right here, angle B. Okay, if I add those angles together, it has to equal 180 degrees. Like I said, we kind of accept these things as true, but in geometry, we like to have some real proof. Okay, so let's take a look at another one. Okay, the third angle theorem of a triangle. Okay, it says that if, one, if the two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, then the third angles of the triangles are also congruent. So, Here's our kind of informal proof. So we've got the same kind of setup here. We've got two triangles, and I'm telling you that angle A is congruent to angle D, and angle B is congruent to angle E. Okay, well, we just showed that the angles of those triangles have to add up to 180 degrees. So that means the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle B. I'll tell you what, I'm going to reorder that. keep it alphabetical, uh, is equal to 180 degrees, and that the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F has to equal 180 degrees. And we just proved that so we can use it. Now, we have that angle A and D are congruent, so we could say that the measures of angle A is equal to the measure of angle D. And we can do the same thing with B and E. The measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle E. Now we can substitute those in. Okay, I can put, I'll tell you what I'll do. Well, I'll do one thing at a time. I have both of these sums are equal to the same 180 degrees. 
Now, if they're both equal to the same value, we can use the transitive property to say that they're equal to each other. Okay, and we can say that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C is equal to the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F. Okay, now, we just said that B and E are the same and A and D are the same. So I'll tell you what, why don't we swap in here and here? Okay, so we'll say the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle C is equal to, and we'll keep this right side exactly the same, measure of angle D plus measure of angle E plus measure of angle F. When I'll take a look at this, guys, I've got measure of angle D plus measure of angle E on both sides of this equation. And if I subtract that from both sides, I'll get that the measure of angle C is equal to the measure of angle F, which means those angles have to be congruent by the definition of congruent angles. So once again, it's kind of common sense. If two of the angles are the same and the angles have to add up to 180 degrees, that third angle has to be the same as well. But again, in geometry, we like to have good solid proof. Okay, let's take a look at one more. This is called the exterior angle theorem okay, for triangles. And it says that the measure of an exterior angle, and by the way, let's be real clear about this. If I look at this diagram, an exterior angle, the angle four. Okay, the exterior angle happens if you extend one of the sides of a triangle and you use one of the existing sides. Okay, that angle that's formed on the outside of that triangle is the exterior angle of that triangle. Okay. And that's equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. Okay, those remote interior angles would be angles 1 and 2. Okay, remote meaning kind of far away and interior meaning inside the triangle. So if I'm using angle 4 as my exterior angle, 1 and 2 would be the farthest away interior angles. Basically, they're the interior angles that are non-adjacent to that exterior angle. Now, we want to do a quick formal proof here, or informal proof, excuse me. Well, I can see here that angles 3 and 4 have to be a linear pair, which means they add up to 180 degrees. So I can say that the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180 degrees. Now, we just talked about how the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 has to equal... 180 degrees. Okay, those angles, the in, interior angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. Take a look, guys. I have both of these sums equal to 180 degrees. That means that by the transitive property, those two sums have to be equal to each other. So we can say that the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. And now look at this. I've got the measure of angle 3 on both sides of this uh, equation. So if I subtract that from both sides, I'll have the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. Okay, and that's exactly what we wanted to prove. The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. Okay, again, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. But as always in geometry, we like to have solid proofs to show that it has to be true. Now, we can use these properties to answer questions and to find missing measures on some diagrams. So let's take a look at some. Okay, I'm going to find the missing measures 1, 2, and 3 on this diagram. Now, we know one thing. We know that our, if I have angles 1, 2, and 3 in this diagram, these are all interior angles. So I don't think that the exterior angle one is gonna to be too useful. But maybe the third angle theorem and probably the angle sum theorem for triangles. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with the interior angles on these. Now, I can find angle one pretty quickly. Okay, because those three angles in this first triangle here have to add up to 180 degrees. So I can start out by saying that 28 degrees plus 82 degrees plus the measure of angle one has to equal 180 degrees. Combine these two, okay, and I'll get 110 degrees plus the measure of angle one equals 180 degrees. 
subtract that 110 from both sides, and the measure of angle 1 is going to be equal to 70 degrees. Now, continue on with what we know. Angles 1 and 2, those are a special pair of angles. And if we think back to some stuff that we talked about in the past, let's see, do I have it right here? Yep. Okay, we have, we scroll up here, these list of properties here. Oh, these are all the properties that we've talked about throughout the course of the year. We've got this vertical angles theorem that says if two angles are vertical angles, then they're going to be congruent. Well, angles 1 and 2 are definitely vertical angles, which means they're going to be congruent. So, if angle 1 measures 70, 70 degrees, that means angle 2 is also going to measure 70 degrees. Okay? And maybe we'll make a little note saying that these two are vertical angles. Okay, then finally, we need to find the measure of angle 3. Okay, now angle 3 here is inside of this triangle. And we still have the same rules. The angle measures of the triangle have to sum to 180 degrees. So if I take the measure of angle 2, 70 degrees, plus this guy over here, 68 degrees, and I add that unknown measure of angle 3, that has to equal 180 degrees. And now we've got a basic algebra problem, which I think most of us can solve. Okay, add those two together, and we'll get 138 degrees, plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees, Subtract the 138 from both sides, and the measure of angle 3 has to equal 42 degrees. So we'll list that over here so we have all three of these together. And we have measure of angle 170, measure of angle 2 is 70, and measure of angle 3 is 42 degrees. Now, someone's going to suggest that we add these three together as a check. I do 140, or excuse me, 70 plus 70, I'll get 140, plus another 42 degrees is going to be 182. Here's the catch, guys. These three angles are not all in the same triangle. So these three angles do not have to add up to 180 degrees. We may see some examples where the three angles that we find do have to add up to 180, but that's not always going to be the case. Okay? All right, now let's take a look at some more. This diagram has a little more to it. Okay, there's some extra triangles on here. There's some exterior angles. Let's see what we can find. Okay, now first off, okay, just because the angles are numbered in this order does not necessarily mean that's the order that we're going to find them. It might, but it doesn't have to. Well, let's take a look and let's see what we can find. Okay, if I look at all these angles, let's start with the most logical one, angle 1. Okay, angle 1 is out here. It's not inside of any triangle. Angle 1 is actually an exterior angle for this far left triangle. If I extend this side, and I use one of the existing sides of the triangle, angle one is this exterior angle. And we have the exterior angle theorem that says that that angle has to be equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles, which means angle one has to be equal to the sum of these two guys. So let's set that equation up. Let's say the measure of angle one is equal to 50 degrees plus 78 degrees. Okay, add those together, and we'll get 128 degrees. So that's one of our answers. To so tell you what, I'm going to set up my answer box over here. Measure of angle 1, measure of angle 2, measure of angle 3, 4, and 5. Okay, and we'll list all those answers here. So angle 1, 128 degrees. Hey, we're off to a great start. Okay, now, let's keep going. Makes sense to go to an angle two now. Hey, look at this. Angles one and two. So here's angle one, here's angle two. Those two angles form a special pair. They're a linear pair, which means those angle measures also have to add up to 180 degrees. So let's set that up. Let's say the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. And let's sum it, sub in what we have. So 128 plus the measure of angle 2, has to equal 180 degrees. Subtract that 128 from both sides, and the measure of angle 2 has to equal 52 degrees. Okay, and let's put that over here in our answer box. Okay, and let's keep on rolling. Well, we found these two, so let's go on and try to find angle 3. Well, angle 3 is an interior angle, 
So that tells me that I would have to have uh, either all th the other two angles inside a triangle um, or two angles that are congruent in another triangle. We don't. Okay, so we run into this kind of a little snag here before we can find angle three. We do have the measure of angle one, or excuse me, the measure of angle two here. Okay, I have that, but I don't have this guy. There is, however, a quick way that we can find that guy. Okay, first off, let's call it angle six, just for fun. Angle six and this angle are also a linear pair which means they have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I do the measure of angle six plus that 120 degrees, that has to equal 180. Subtract that 120 from both sides. Whoop, I called this measure of angle two. Let's fix that. Measure of angle six plus 120, subtract the 120 from both sides, and we'll get the measure of angle six is gonna be equal to 60 degrees. Okay, so we can use that now. Okay, because now these three angles together have to equal 180 degrees. So measure of angle two plus measure of angle three plus measure of angle six has to be 180 degrees. Okay, two is 52 degrees. Measure of angle three is what we're looking for. Measure of angle six is 60 degrees. Okay, add those together, it's got to equal 180. Combine the 52 and the 60, and we get measure of angle three plus 112 degrees equals 180 degrees. Subtract that 112 from both sides, and we get that the measure of angle three is equal to, uh, that'll be 68 degrees. Okay, so let's put that over here in our answer box. And we're rolling along now. Hey, look at this. Next one that makes sense is angle four. Angle four and angle six are vertical angles. We actually don't have to do any work at all to find angle four. Okay, angle four is gonna be the same as angle six, which we said was 60 degrees. We might wanna make a little note. Measure of angle four is equal to the measure of angle six because they're vertical. Okay. but we don't have to do any actual math to find that measure of angle six. Well, now it comes to angle five. And angle five is out here, and it is an exterior angle. Now, exterior angles are equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. So this angle five has to be equal to this angle four plus 56 degrees. So let's set up that equation. Measure of angle five is equal to measure of angle four plus 56 degrees. And we just said that measure of angle four is 60 degrees plus that 56 degrees. Add those two together and we'll get 116 degrees. And there we are. Okay, we can use those properties that we just discussed to find missing measures on a diagram. Sometimes those diagrams are a little bit more complex, like this one. Some of them are pretty straightforward, like this first one that we started. Okay, now one thing that we want to keep in mind is something like this. Those vertical angles and the linear pairs that we've talked about in previous sections, those are still very applicable for us. All of those tricks that we've used in the past, we still get to use. It's not like we learn new stuff and the old stuff goes away. We're going to keep building, keep adding to our bag of tricks, and then use whatever we need, whatever we can apply to get that job done. So the three new properties that we have here are that the angles of a triangle have to sum to 180 degrees. Okay. The third angle theorem says that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, then the third angle of those triangles is, is congruent. So if two angles and triangles are congruent, the third angles are also congruent. And then lastly, the exterior angle theorem for triangles says the measures of an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. And one more time, an exterior angle is formed by extending one side of the triangle and keeping the existence side of the triangle. 
And that angle formed on the outside of the triangle is an exterior angle. The remote interior angles are going to be these two guys over here, the interior angles that are not adjacent to that exterior angle. 